I am Joseph Bolton and I play the tuba. I'm James McClure and I play the trumpet. I'm Greg and I play guitar. I'm Marlon and I play the drums. I'm Gabriel and I play tenor saxophone. Uh, my name is Rick and I help put the whole Find the Nomads campaign together. When Rake brought up the idea, I remember we were playing a little ad hoc gig at Desperados and OBS. Yeah, we hadn't played a gig for a long time yeah. and we were kind of sick of just rehearsing. Uh, so we decided let's do both and just book a gig, book a gig now. now. Like now, where can so we play right now? And, boom, 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 done. <laughs> and then Rake came and he said, come, we're playing, we're playing a very impromptu show. We're just kind of punting it as a secret show, but we actually kind of need to just rehearse our set. Mm. I was like, cool, came down. And I remember going up to the table where Rake was, sitting maybe Rake and Raven and a few people, and sitting down Someone in the show Raven and playing to them. It was very awkward because you're sitting with people at a table and you're having tea or whatever, and you, but you can't talk to them, they can talk to you. Yeah. But you're doing like... That's another thing about yeah, playing, so funny. this is a bit off topic, but playing yeah. a brass instrument. Like, yeah. all other guys can talk and play, but we, you they know, can talk, we I can't. laugh. Yeah, they can eat. <laughs> they can We've, eat as well. We can't yeah. eat. we got to play. Like, you got to they can drink. They can do whatever they want. So awkward. Yeah. But anyway, so then it was that. And then Ray came and he said, we must do this thing properly. This is really effective. Like, yeah. going and interacting with people in an intimate environment. And he was sitting there watching and... I remember him telling me, you know, I was looking around and all I could see was phones in the air. All I could see was content being created. And this is what you must do. This is what you must do. I think you said it like three times. Yeah. You have to do this. Yeah. That's yes, a great yes. idea. And normally people just speak and say, let's start something. And then he's like, okay, whatever. But Rick was, Rick was like, okay, I'm meeting you like next week. <laughs> like we're doing cool. this. <laughs> and the ball just started running. Yeah. Cool. I'd say the hardest part of this campaign was getting everyone there on time. Waking up. Early. early. <laughs> up late. I think for me getting up early. Getting them out of bed and dressed and clean. I mean you have Joseph Bolton that's late all the time, which doesn't help. <laughs> that was fun. So seven seven in the morning at Paradise Motors, one one considers traffic in the morning, you know? Like every other From person Westlake. is going to Joseph in Westlake. Wakes up early in the morning and goes, No, I will totally I'm be there in like ten minutes. <laughs> like no, it's like rush hour. <laughs> so that that he miscalculated. Yeah, that morning that we did the traffic, I really I struggled. For Joe, it's, I think it's more getting here on time. The uncertainty of each show, I would say. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Not knowing whether it's actually going to go down well, if anyone's going to complain, or if we're going to have set up problems, power supply, all that. Yeah. yeah. As a drummer carrying gear, setting up <laughs> gear before a gig is yeah. Trying to get to a place without people seeing you, like, because the whole part is, me it's like meant to be a surprise. So, like, when Joe comes with the tuba, like, already people are like, you know? Something, something's up. Yeah. <laughs> something's what going these on. Guys up to? The triple A show was was difficult as well because we had we had to set up all our stuff in the stairwell, like in the fire escape. So we set up all our stuff and we had to sort of just get ready to go and then drop it and plug in and play. So that that was kind of that was kind of fun and tricky. The hardest part for me actually was the Nordic Farm Village gig. That was a, <laughs> like for me the hardest gig. I don't know, just because people were sitting at a restaurant just over the over the wall. And like they can see you there, but they're eating, so they're not going to get up and party and have a good time. It's like, oh, cool, man. Yeah. And there was a guy selling balls and strings for an extortionate price. Yeah, yeah. Literally a ball and a string. What was he doing? He was selling balls, right? <laughs> yeah, and strings. He was and strings. Balls ball and strings. What the fuck? Oh, he's fine. He was just being a. He was running a animal. business. He was running a legitimate business. I am running a business here, and you guys, <laughs> you can't play here with me because you're going to steal my clients. <laughs> Play on that side, but then he actually dug the music. No, he did. He actually. But I was not enjoying it. He's trying to set up on that side, but this guy's serious about selling balls to kids. Because uh, <laughs> selling balls to kids is what's needed in this country. If that's not happening, the world's going to shit. So that's why we are here. But it's cool. Playing for the people. We almost had a run-in with the law at Paradise Motors. It was just a stroke of either good luck or horrible luck that the robots at the intersection were out 
So there was uh, an outsurance traffic guy and a real traffic cop as well. And there was just before we were about to set up and go, and we were going like, oh my oh, word, shit, are, are, are they going down. to, are they going to like cut, shut us down? Well, they didn't do anything to us. We thought they might, but they actually handed out flyers for us. It's obviously intimidating when someone walks up and goes, I'm always yeah, wearing a uniform. Looks kind of official. <laughs> UCT, there was a little run-in with uh, campus security, but they just yeah, wanted to yeah. dance and chill. Yeah. More often than not, they, they actually were coming to see what was going on and, and listen to the music. We got noise complaints at the Sergeant yeah. Pepper gig from an unknown source. We had a complaint there, so we had to stop early. Yeah, I think there were like 11 noise complaints in like 5 minutes or something. <laughs> <laughs> we only played for like 20 minutes or something like I that. I think I was hung over. Uh, yeah. Which ones weren't you hung over for? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Injin, the manager, came and he was just a bit grumpy. Yeah. I was really surprised because I didn't know how anyone could really be grumpy with like a Balkan band in your running into in the middle shop. of the night, <laughs> running into your morning. shop. <laughs> the weirdest show was when we played at the Engine on Orange Street. Okay, I got this, I got this. <laughs> weirdest show, Jammy Shuttle. The Newark show was the weirdest show. For me, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. so strange. Like getting on a bus and having to play and like swinging around corners and like... There was only oh, a you think you can play and then it's like a... Yeah. <laughs> Actually, quite a few of them were awkward because you don't know if people are enjoying it or if they're getting annoyed. And we kind of just walked in, played a song, got kicked out, and then Ray convinced the security guard to let us in for another one. So we yeah. went in for one last one. I think Bass convinced him actually. Did Bass convince him? In his drunken state. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, that was perfect. Back in. Yes, you. Can we go back in? Can we? Yeah. We play skin and out. Sorry? Play skin and out, Nick. Okay, it's one through. Okay. 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 But that was that was probably the most uncomfortable I've ever felt playing my saxophone. And humans are generally awkward, and you sit next to them and you're playing and you're dancing, but they and I don't know what to fucking do. Yeah, something just flipped, and like everyone was jam jamming around yeah. the, the engine and stuff. Front people reactions are good. Yeah. And then like speed bump. <laughs> oh yeah, you get a... <laughs> yeah. You know? Some of them, they, stay, they were there for like like 10 minutes. <laughs> Some of them, like they almost watched like half the set. Same. The general reaction was sort of uh, delight, but not like just sort of dumbfoundedness. Like yeah. what's going on? I was going to say every show immediately just camera phones. Just like everywhere. Adjacent's back here? Adjacent's. Jason's there was this uh, gym thing going on. Oh, that was cool. And they were doing it. They were like filming and dancing and shit. Yeah. And then just, yeah, just millions of phones. People reacted so differently for most of the shows, but in general, they were very surprised and kind of as if their moods were instantly lifted. We played at Yours Truly and that was quite fun and we, we made a ruckus there. We, we were just setting up and we just started playing and then all of a sudden like 10 tourists came out and all of them just went, iPhones! And I was like, whoa, what happened there? <laughs> Didn't you get on the table and start doing a solo there? Yeah, right? without trying to knock over beers and coffees. <laughs> it was a very sort of delicate kind of rock and roll moment. Sort of like oh. rock and roll, but I don't want to coffee. Rockstar. <laughs> sure. The biggest part of that was was the surprise element, which is something we always try to play on in the campaign. Uh, so Rake Otto gave his um, presentation on the Find the Nomads project at his uh, at one of his classes at um, Triple A School of Advertising, and what he did is secretly he snuck us in for his like mission for so. his lecture, which was a mission. And then I think was it as he started, he reached a certain point in his, and then he gave his us the signal project and gave us the signal. And then we came in and quickly set up and started playing, you know, like Epic. guerrilla style. <laughs> and that was. The, the, the audience was super surprised because obviously, you know, like they're like, oh, presentations all day mm. today. Oh, so boring. Rake's one was cooler. <laughs> Not boring. Um, but I just, but I, they just, I, there's no ways they expected that. And then sort of everyone else, obviously it was a really loud noise coming yeah. from one class. So everyone else sort of, you know, came out of their classrooms to see what the hell was going on. There were the, the people who figured out where the show would be and then they came to watch. Um, through the clues on social media, but then there were the people who were just going to be there anyway, and suddenly this band put a drum kit down and just started playing. If you can suddenly introduce a band like the Nomadic Orchestra into a situation where there are no expectations at all, like the result is the net gain of happiness, like throughout. The net gain of happiness. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Measuring. It's empirical. What 
What didn't you expect that was awesome? To have these shows that shouldn't have been allowed to happen just get so well received by the people who were meant to tell us to leave. <laughs> Hearing like applause in an engine, it's like the strangest. <laughs> it's like something's not right about this. Okay, the morning traffic for me was like the response actually this sounds boring but the response was unbelievably amazing especially morning traffic it's such a good way to start like everyone just gets to see what we're doing and the robots were broken so people had to like kind of stop and film us <laughs> and you guys got to run around and hand off flies like yeah that that turned out real good yeah. i was really worried because it felt really illegal roxy's was cool there was this uh, this like 10 year old chick dancing oh, yeah, full on but the amount of people that came to us within that month and asked us about it and was just like, they were so aware of it. Random old school friends, people that don't follow us on Facebook, people that just heard mention of it and everyone was very interested. And it was just like, you know, this thing has gotten more attention than any gig we've played, any music we've released, any video we've made. And it was just so refreshing. Shortly after we finished doing this whole campaign, I went up to Car Car and Car in Oatsone he was a sound guy who's from Joburg and he is about, he was probably about 35, mid 30, something like that. He, without knowing my involvement in the campaign, when I mentioned the Matic Orchestra, the first thing he said was, have you seen this campaign that they're doing? Have you seen what they're doing with these pop-up shows and stuff? And for me, it was just like the most amazing thing to see, like, wow, the, the word of mouth and, and the social media kind of virality of it all has spread this far and we haven't actually released that much content surrounding it, just a photo here and there. Mm. That for me was just like the most awesome, unexpected like level of reach in terms of word of mouth. Setup was only a mission for the ones where we weren't close to PowerPoints, I guess. I mean, if there was one plug and we could plug in the two amplifiers that we needed for tuba and guitar, things were fine. But as soon as we needed to be next to the road somewhere and needed a generator and make sure there was petrol for it, <laughs> I mean, it was mainly it was mainly Rex doing, and he did a great job of it. What was that question? Was set up a mission? I'm James, and I play the trumpet. And for me, set up is not a mission because I just take my stupid mouthpiece and I put it in my little instrument, and I'm done. It was a mission for someone, definitely, like drum kit people and generator people, but not for us. Yeah, we we, we got it easy, <laughs> we for just, us. Yeah, but someone definitely did some work. Setting up was a mission. Yes. Generally we have like a, a four piece drum kit that we have to set up every time and then as well as the guitar amp. So you know first we all carry in the drum kit and then the amp arrives, someone's already started playing while you distract attention and then the whole band's there Boom, within yeah. 10 seconds. Uh, Joe has a little keyboard amplifier and what we did is we took a little mixing desk and we put the, the kick drum um, and the tuba, tuba through, the, through that as well. So just to give the kick drum and the tuba a bit more power and projection. Yeah, the setup was a mission because you really want to keep the element of surprise. Yeah. And if people see you like setting up casually, then it gives the whole game away. <laughs> Joseph, did you find it effective? I found the campaign, Find the Nomads. Massively, no, I found it massively, massively effective. With Find the Nomads, the social media aspect was fun and enriching for us and I think like the, the audience as well, yeah. you know. Facebook grew by 20 something percent. I think it was a couple, uh, just a, a close to a thousand likes or uh, 600, 700 likes over the month. Just getting people to create content and it worked so much better than I even <laughs> imagined actually. Twitter, Twitter less so, but close to 200 more followers. Um, people actually shared stuff and that, because they wanted to and because they, they were interested and they cared, <laughs> you know, and we posted stuff because we wanted to, not out of like obligation, like, oh, we've got to do our, yeah, you know, yeah. like, we're like, oh, this is exciting, we want to share this and then sharing it and people going, oh, this is cool. Just seeing how the stuff can just go nuts and people are all over it and that they do the work for you. You were saying Twitter didn't show as much number increase but it definitely showed more activity like yeah getting retweets from people like dj fresh and outsurance catherine and yeah. catherine from rfm and john savage if we'd done the final find the nomad stuff without social media it would have probably been a flop you I know think. i'm just thinking now i wouldn't be surprised if the people who know find the nomads and not nomadic orchestra yeah <laughs> maybe yeah. more people yeah the show at the assembly afterwards was stunning i thought um, I don't know if you want to add to that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we were all kind of stressed out about the gig because we we had booked a lineup that we thought would be successful, but also cost us a lot of money, including you know assembly being an expensive venue. So we were kind of, are we going to get people here? Are we going to fill the place? And we definitely did. We had more than enough people through the door. The whole finding the nomads was a build up to the assembly show. I mean, we were handing out flyers at the gig yeah. that gave us 
I mean, it's giving all the information for that assembly gig. So, but yeah, that it's was one of the best gigs I've ever played with No Man's. I really love that show. It, okay, the turnout of the gig trouble. and the crowd and the bands that we got to play and with. The energy. The and evening. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. <clears throat> it's still like evening. It was a stellar evening. Still a time was had by all. Yeah. I think, um, I think obviously the Find the Man's campaign helped the assembly crowd. Mm. But I think it more helped just all our shows. Yeah, it, it helped was, it as well as all the other shows that we're having now. It it, uh, it rose our social network status. It did it not? Yeah. Yes. It grew it. <laughs> it it augmented our social network status. <laughs> I think I think we should definitely do it again. Are we going to do find the nomads again? Yes, but I more think we extreme. Should. More. Oh, you've you've had this idea for a long time. Oh, I've got an idea. Gosh. I'm not even going to say it because my idea is like really cool, and I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to say it unless we're going to do it. I'd love to do it again. But we, I wouldn't like to rehash the same thing over and over again. Yeah. I think each time it would need something new, something... It would be nice to get some new ideas, you know, something, something else that's really fresh and... Although it is cool to just, like, force our music onto people. And it's very like, true. There's something cool about that. Well, it's... it's people don't. It's really fun for us either way, so... Stuff the people, <laughs> stuff you guys. <laughs> stuff, it's for us, you, you know? If we get to play and people can enjoy it. I think we probably will do it again, in some form. I'm I would, sure I would like to, and I think it's... Yeah. It was really fun and I enjoy doing those gigs, yeah. Do you think we should do it again? This campaign was real good for us, like, only good things came from it. So. Yeah.